we've done is we've uh, researched on how to build a plane, uh, done the calculations, figured out how to attach solar cells to it, and then built a plane three times, and then this is the third version. And <laughs> yes, we're not going to show it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, so this is the people who are. Hello. Yeah. So these are the members who are participating in this project. So it's Angus here who's online. He is the electrical engineer of the team. And we have Valerie here who is the group leader and specializes in software engineering. Then you have me, a mechanical engineer. <laughs> so we've been inspired primarily by uh, the Airbus Zephyr project and uh, the YouTube channel called RC Testlight. Uh, the Airbus Zephyr specifically is very interesting because they plan on replacing satellites with a uh, similar concept to ours, which is a plane that can fly pretty much indefinitely in their case for months, uh, high up in the stratosphere and take pictures of Earth. It essentially acts as a satellite, but it's a lot cheaper. And then there's RC Testlight, which uh, flies a plane for like um, eight or nine hours, which is a lot more than you can do with conventional batteries, and of course it's a lot closer to our capabilities. Alright, so these are the processes that we have to go through in order to build this plane. So first we start with the calculations, as you can see. That's just a 2D drawing of the, the plane. And we calculated the wingspan and everything. And then after we did that, we moved on to the to designing it. It was me and Valerie who designed all the parts of the plane. And after designing it, we 3D printed everything and ordered everything we needed. And we built this plane, which was used for our first. This was the second version of the plane that we actually that we built. So we presented this plane in the in the first for the quarter final game. So I'll now talk about the component that I designed. Uh, well, I designed the wings and the tail. The tail essentially allows the plane to control its pitch, which is this axis, and its yaw, which is this axis. Both are very important. Uh, essentially, the way it works, you can see it here, is there are, well, not in this model, but in the future, there will be cables running along from these servo motors, if you can hold this like this, these servo motors, which move cables that then actuate uh, those control surfaces that you see over there, and those move, and they change the aerodynamics of the wing to uh, basically direct the air upwards or downwards, and that, of course, causes it to turn in the correct direction. And we control that remotely using the RC remote. All right, so now I'm going to talk about the part that I designed, which is the fuselage here. So basically, the fuselage is just the body of the plane. So as you can see, the yellow part there, all the yellow part is the fuselage. And we actually yeah, we printed everything using a 3D printer that I have. So these, this is all the fuselage. And if you can look closely, there are, like, you could say, cages inside the fuselage in specific locations. Uh, that's because we want the plane to be balanced. And so these parts have to be in specific locations. So they're mainly for the electronics side of the plane, which Angus will talk about later. And yeah. <coughs> so I also designed the wing. Uh, if you can pull this one up, yeah, this must be uh, So here you can see the solar cells, which are mounted on these uh, thin strips to reduce mass. Uh, the solar cells are then wired. Uh, I think it's going to wire. Um, also, the wing is covered with this polypropylene uh, thin film of plastic, which is completely transparent to UV light, I believe, uh, which means that it's very, very well, it doesn't affect the efficiency that much. Um, this is a very early attempt at this. It will be better with time, hopefully. Yeah. Also, the wing has control surfaces, such as the aileron, which you can see here. Uh, this is also connected to the servo motors in the fuselage uh, to allow you to control the yellow axis, which is this one. This is video. <coughs> So, um, moving on to electronics. 
This is a basic idea of what our circuit looks like. First off, we have the solar cells, which produce power from sunlight, and they charge a battery pack via the charge controller, which protects the battery from conditions such as over voltage and overload. And then the battery is then responsible for powering the rest of the circuits other than the transmitter. For the rest of the circuits, we have a pancake motor, which is basically the front of the plane, and it's controlled by an electronic speed controller, which we are not going to go further into. It is also connected to a receiver, which receives signals from the transmitter, allowing us to then control the other servo motors, controlling the control surfaces of the plane, such as airlines. So these are the videos showing the operation of the pancake motor, the pancake motor with the propeller blades, and the servo motors. Now, a major player on our plane is undoubtedly the solar cells. We utilize sun power maxion solar cells, which basically have a conversion efficiency of 23%, which is pretty decent. It can also generate a maximum possible value of 3.5 watts of power if under the most optimum conditions. So to the left, you can see a picture showing the front view and the back view of our solar cells. To the bottom right is actually a picture of solar impulse, which is the first solar-powered electric electro plane to circumnavigate the Earth. And fun fact, the cells they use are actually the same cells or the same exact cells we're going to use in our plane. So for the range of the solar cells, we have three options. We can either wire them individually in series, in pairs, or in triads. However, owing to factors such as shielding of solar cells and power losses due to the heating effects, biochemical flow, we decided to go for the more compromised solution, which is arranging them in pairs. So you can see we're using this exact arrangement on the plane. So basically, there are three pairs of cells mounted on each wing, while the remaining pairs are constructed with a combination of full cells and half cells. And the half cells are created by cutting the cells in half, of course. And the reason we did that instead of just using pairs is because the fuselage cannot incorporate a full cell because it's not wide enough. That's why we had to go for this solution for the same effect. So now we're back to you guys. Okay, so these are just some laws and regulations that we have to follow in order to fly this plane. So I highlighted the most, I underlined the most important ones. So the second one, I believe it's, it says the plane can't fly over 120 meters. And there is one more which just says we have to have an 18 year old with us, and that, that person has to have an operator ID in order, to, in order for us to fly this plane. And also, there's also one more thing called the flyer ID, which anyone can do. It's just a, a test that you, have to, that you have to do in order to have an ID to fly the plane. And as you can see, I passed a bit pretty well. I got pretty far. And now I have an ID to fly the plane. But it was not the I got through the bad. So here are some references and yeah. Would yeah. you like to do a live demonstration? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Parts, these are the servers, just, just kind of like a control using the stick, and they would always be full. 
the strings. Thank you very much.